we're going to go ahead and look at our um, PC scan version. Our PC scan tool, which will come up in about a moment, is physically very similar. However, this one does not include the laptop. Basically, what you have is a VCI module, the module that we looked at at the um, back of the tool, this one here that comes off the back. All right, this is the module that allows us to go wireless from the vehicle while doing some testing. That will come with your PC scan that's in the kit. Also in the kit will be software for your um, um, uh, laptop so you can set it up. And you'll have the OBD-1 Asian cables, green in color, the OBD-1 domestic cables, green and blue in color. And you'll also have um, a little box to hold it in. Well, what's really pretty interesting about this device is it's also wireless. All right. You do need to have a, either a Windows XP or a Windows Vista 32-bit. Advance to the next slide, please. All right. What we're going to do now at this point is we're going to go ahead and physically look at the help screens that are available to you. In a little while, you may want to, after talking to me and doing some setups, you may not remember everything that I show you or talk to you about. Wherever you are, at any point, whether I'm in data stream or I'm diagnostic trouble codes or on the main menu, the help button is always available to you. That help button will physically be there for you to go get information so you can reference back to where you were. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly show you the help. I'm going to use my finger on the touch screen. I'm going to touch on help. When you do, up comes a full list. You'll notice that there's my contents list. One of the things that's very difficult for many people to grasp is how to set up wireless. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on VCI user configuration. When I do, up comes another menu, and I'm going to then tap on wireless setup. When I tap on wireless setup, it will come up to the next page, and there is how to actually set up the wireless, screen by screen by screen, on the actual Pegasus. And then I can physically either use my speed scroll to scroll through, or I can use my finger to strike up or down to physically scroll through the tool. So once again, I can physically scroll up and down using my finger by striking down to go down pages or striking up to go to the advanced pages, or I could use my speed scroll over on the far right. Remember I told you the speed, scan, speed scroll on the left, excuse me, the speed scroll here to the left controls everything within this panel. And the speed scroll to the right controls all the tabs over on the left panel. Once I've done that, my next step then would be to learn how to physically set up the um, update process. So I'm going to go to Menu. I'm going to tap on Utilities. And we're going to quickly look at the first thing to set up. First of all, Whenever I want to know what updates on my tool, I'm going to go to Systems Information. And when you do, you will see that what is up in the upper left, the word Presenter, over to the far right or in the middle, will be the version number. If we could zoom in on the, cam on the component, you'll notice that the presenter says 1.9.24. That is the current update at this time. But I'm going to show you how to get that update anyway. At this point, I'm going to go touch on Menu once more. We're going to set up our network so you can see how we're going to do it. Basically, we're setting physically to, at this point in time, to go wireless with the vehicle and wired with the Internet. So I've got to go ahead and set my wireless configuration first. To do that, I'll tap on wireless. The top configuration shows the VCI undocked wireless to the car and the tablet physically connected to the Internet. I'm going to tap on that. It's going to show me that I have a couple different VCIs in the room because we have a few Pegasus in the room at the moment. The one at the very bottom is my serial number, 970. I'll tap on that. It's going to find my VCI, and we should be ready to go. We'll give it a few moments. It will find the VCI, and we'll then be wireless to the vehicle and we'll hardwire to the Internet. We are now connected. And you'll notice that it says wireless is connected at the very bottom. Along with that, let's go ahead and set up to do an actual um, uh, update of the tool. I'm going to physically touch on Menu. I'll then touch on where it says Software Update. In a moment, up comes a tab where I can go ahead and check for Software Update. When I check for Updates, it will quickly go out to the Internet, and it says there are no updates available for my tool because I'm already at 1.9.24. Um, ladies and gentlemen, if you please will go out and update your tools, you'll see that we're ready to go. All right. Okay, let's go to menu. We're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to do a few tests at the moment. I did set a fault code in this vehicle so we can see what repair information is available for us. So right now I'm going to go ahead and do a vehicle selection. This is a 2006 Dodge Caravan. I'll go right to New Vehicle Entry. And when I do go to New Vehicle Entry, up will come some common icons you're used to. USA Domestic showing a map of the United States. 
so you would know exactly that's what you're working with. And then, of course, the Asian islands and the European islands. So at this point, our Asian country, European countries. I'm going to tap on USA Domestic, and the next thing that will come up will be all my years. If we could pull it back out a little bit, you'll notice that if you look at the year range of your scan tool, you'll notice that in green color is the present decade. Below each year is the actual 10th digit of the vehicle, and in blue, you'll notice is the previous decade of the 90s and the red in 1980s, and then white for the 1970s. I'm going to go ahead and select 2006, and then now you'll notice that we no longer go to GM to find Chevrolet. We now have all our domestic manufacturers on one page. We're going to go right to Dodge. We're going to go right to Van and Minivan, and I'm using my finger, touch screen, and I'm now going to go to Caravan, because this is a regular Caravan. It's not a Grand Caravan. And now we're going to go to the SXT. The SXT information came from the rear hatch of the vehicle. All right. Now, at this point, we're ready to begin some testing. You'll notice we have all the modules available to us from PCM to Global Mobility 2. And if you strike up, you'll notice we've got everything, including secure, skim security. So I'm going to go ahead and physically, um, at this point, we'll do the engine, because that's where I set the fault code. Now, one of the things I'm going to talk to you about in a few minutes is something I just selected was engine and that there was about nine other modules. So let's continue a little bit. It gave us a picture of the cable. We're only using the OBD2 cable. I'm already hooked up to the vehicle. The ignition key is now on. My VCI is wireless to the tablet. I'm going to touch on that cable. When I do, it will come up to our test menus. In a moment, we'll be ready to begin. First of all, there were many modules available for this vehicle. I did select engine. That's the fault code I do have. However, I need to be able to go look at other modules to see if there's any other related fault codes, such as traction control, ABS, or otherwise. If there are related fault codes, they might be part of the repair, but they also might be repairs that I could sell to the customers in upscale or an upsell later. So we're going to do two different things. First of all, we're going to go to all systems DTC scan. In all systems DTC scan, the Pegasus will actually go out and physically talk to each and every one of the modules, and it will automatically switch the VCI to do the talking for us. So I'm going to go ahead and touch on all systems DTC. It's going to physically go through our test. You'll notice it will be building a list of controllers. It asks us for which airbag system we have. This does have one on the driver and passenger side. It's now going to physically go ahead and talk to each controller, set up the list, and now it's going to start pulling the fault codes. It's building a database of all the fault codes that are there for the vehicle. And it'll take a few minutes. This could take anywhere from approximately 30 seconds to as much as four and a half minutes, depending on the vehicle, of course. In this case, this vehicle, approximately about a minute and a half. We're going to let it go. Um, they're going to advance the PowerPoint slides so you can see how they go. Um, we will probably uh, have some other PowerPoints available for you in the near future. Uh, and please always come and see what other webcasts are available. There are PowerPoint slides available at uh, PegasusOTC.com, available to you at any time. And then you can also get our video of the uh, reflash there as well. We are still building a list of all the fault codes. At the end of this, we'll then go look at the repair information that is available to us at that time. We're going to look at two types of repair information, what is built into the tool, known as diagnostic information or Pathfinder in the past, and then later on we'll go ahead and look at Direct Hit, Identifix database on the Internet. If you notice, gentlemen, we're at 58%. We're looking at body control module at the moment.